what is going on everybody? Thanks for checking out today's video. We're going to be doing a build on the Polygon Siskiyou T7 and I'm super stoked to show you guys this bike. Uh, I've been looking at it for a long time on Bikes Online website. If you're looking online to buy a bike, I know a lot of bike manufacturers, different bike shops are kind of low on stock. So this was one of the options I looked towards. Uh, so I pulled the trigger on it and it actually arrived pretty quick. So we're going to be going through and doing the build today. So let's show you this right now. All right, here it is. This thing was actually packaged pretty well. And they do a really nice job. They put the foam inserts, they have the Velcro straps. And that way, if you ever have to pack this thing back up, if you move or you wanna ship it somewhere else, you can actually put it together nicely again. So this thing looks pretty good. Super stoked, I love the colors. You know, I didn't think I was gonna to be too big of a fan at first, but after opening it, man, it is, it is pretty cool. And the, these tires super wide this one does come with the schwable tires and that's one thing about this bike a lot of people are saying that you you may or may not get the good tires with this uh, depending on what they have in stock right here they include that little gift kit that has the torque wrench and a couple other items in it so we'll break this open here in a second yeah super impressed with how this thing was packaged you can tell that there was a breakthrough in the cardboard over here but it doesn't look like it got damaged any uh, so yeah we'll have to see after further inspecting it once we get in the bike stand all right let's pull this thing out get in the bike stand so it came out pretty easy this tire is uh super deflated i don't know what happened Okay, so here we have the gift set they, they provide as a little bicycle owner's manual. Gets this little torque wrench. This thing will actually do the job pretty well, even though it is really basic in design. Comes with the little bits and a nice little spanner wrench right here. Okay, and here you get a chain. These, you can just throw these away. And you get your pedals. Even a little bell. <laughs> yeah, they give you a little bell. This is like the weirdest looking bell I've ever seen. Yeah. So some other tools and things that you might want to have uh, ready is going to be a shock pump. If you are building a full suspension bike that has air shocks, you're going to need a shock pump. You can't just use your regular floor pump. Also, you may need a floor pump, that way you can get the, the right PSI in your tires. And I'm gonna be wearing some gloves too because there is kind of some packing grease and everything else on this. And we're also gonna be using some of this assembly grease. So this is muck off bio grease, and we're gonna be using this to apply to the axles and some other components as we put this thing together. Uh, so that's why I'm gonna be wearing some gloves. Also, depending on when you actually purchase your bike from Bikes Online, they may include a free entity branded helmet. And it is a pretty cool little feature, a nice little gift. I will say it's not the highest quality, but it does look pretty cool. Uh, so it'll get you out there on the trail if you don't have a helmet already, but I would probably strongly suggest purchasing a better helmet than this. But pretty cool little feature. And I think it's valued at like 50 bucks. All right, so the bread and butter right here of the video this bike, man, this thing looks awesome. We're gonna go through right now and cut off what we need to. Uh, there are a couple zip ties it looks like, but for the most part, it is these little Velcro tabs and straps that we're gonna be undoing. So one thing I would consider doing, if you do buy, buy a bike like this, where you, you know, there might be the potential of putting it back in the box, is take a photo of where all of this is tied together at, that way you'll have a reference to when you go to put it back in the box one day. So. Just keep that in mind if you're going to be doing this. All right, so let's take these Velcro straps off. I'm going to get the wheel off and put that aside. You can see this is pretty nice. It's got a nice little uh, EVA foam piece right here with uh, the straps. We're just going to set these aside. I'm going to take the handlebars off last. <laughs> We'll 
say these these rims actually look really cool on this. I like the design that's on them. And we'll probably get rid of this right here. There's there's no purpose on the trail for this, so we're gonna get rid of that probably. So that piece was actually really not protecting anything down here. So we're not gonna go through the specs of the bike during this video. If you wanna see all the specifications for this bike, check out my video on that on my channel homepage. Actually, I put the link below in the description box as well. And we'll go through and do a complete specs breakdown of this bike and show you what you're gonna get if you go to purchase this bike from Bikes Online. I am, I'm digging this lime green color that it has. It looks pretty killer, I will say. Uh, pretty nice saddle here, Entity branded as well. I kind of like the stripes that are on it. Uh, the graphics don't look too bad. So this is a Trans X dropper seat post. So we're gonna set this aside. I'm probably just gonna clamp the frame actually into the the bike stand instead of doing it by the saddle post uh, just to make things a little bit easier for me when we're assembling this thing Ooh, those crank arms look pretty killer wow this fork nice rock shock fork on this thing wow it's pretty cool okay we have the bike in the bike stand now we're gonna to try to start taking off what we need to, like the handlebar and get that in place, you know, uh, get the fork all ready to go. Uh, one disclaimer here, I know it's very tempting to go ahead and grab one of the brake levers, but if you were to do that, since this does have hydraulic brakes, you're gonna be messing up the components inside that brake caliber. So refrain from squeezing those. I know they're kind of, kind of tempting to do, uh, but just kind of stay away from that until you get it, uh, the disc brake inside that brake caliber. Okay, there's a, a little plate in there right now, so that's pretty cool that they included that. Let's go ahead and put the handlebars on first. Let me get these unmounted. We're going to go through and loosen up these bolts holding on the stem. Some videos I watched, these bolts were super tight. These aren't too bad though. They're on there just barely in there. So that's good. All right, so what you want to do is get your fork where it needs to be. in relation to where the cables need to go. So this is a pretty nice stem. I kind of like this one. And the Entity branded handlebars are pretty nice too. And it does have that little indicator right there on the front uh, where you can kind of center it out inside the, the stem. So this is where you want to break out that owner's manual and actually look for the torque specifications. That way you can use that provided torque wrench to actually go ahead and tighten these down. So in the owner's manual here, it does have a torque listing. It's towards the back of the, the manual here, but it does have the different specifications in Newton meters. So you'll just have to check those out for each one. So for the handlebar clamp, on the stem, it's five Newton meters. So that's what we're gonna go for. Okay, we wanna make sure the handlebars are actually centered. And this can be a matter of personal preference. I like my handlebars kind of tilted back just a little bit, but to get them perfectly centered, this little indicator would actually go in the middle of this opening. But I'm gonna tilt mine back just a little bit, but I'm also gonna make sure it's completely centered out in the middle. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna tighten it down now. Okay, so the controls, we're not gonna tighten those down completely. They are kind of snug now. Uh, but once we get to the very end, we're gonna go ahead and sit on the bike and actually adjust these to fit our riding position at the end. 
So next we're gonna install the dropper post, which is one of the best features of this bike in general. Uh, but there is some ways you have to go about doing this. There is a little cable that sticks up right here. But essentially, there's this little barrel right here that you're gonna insert the barrel on the end of the cable into. You wanna make sure you have enough cable, first of all. Okay, you put it in, then you rotate it down. Okay, and then you're gonna pull this down so it can actually clip in to where it needs to go. All right, just like that. Do a little bit of a close up here. Put the barrel down in there, then we rotate it around because there is a little slot there. And then we just pull down until this is on the bottom part of that post. So it wasn't too bad. Other folks had said that, you know, they kind of had a, a hard time getting that in there. So that cable is in there pretty tight and I don't want to kink anything. So I'm just going to grab it, insert it right there as I'm pulling down at the bottom. It is able to be slammed all the way down, which is an awesome feature. You know, then you can actuate it to where you need to, but you can adjust this at the end. So if you needed it up here, cause you have longer legs or something, you know, you can always adjust that. Okay. We'll tighten that down here in a second. Once we get this cable ran, right, I'm just routing that underneath and we're not going to clamp it down completely right now. We're, when we set up our rider controls, when we actually sit on it, we'll go ahead and clamp it down. Uh, and even on this piece, it says two Newton meters uh, for the torque spec on that. So we're just going to slow it down for right now. All right, so this thing is looking pretty good. The fork, I love the fork. The stanchions, nice and blacked out. They look nice. Headset feels really smooth. That's pretty good. I noticed uh, some of the reviews on this, they were really creaky when they're out on the trail. So that's something we'll keep in mind. Uh, always. You know, you can take this apart and grease it. I'm not going to in this video, uh, but in another video, I'm gonna be doing an upgrade video on this and we'll actually take the headset off and actually grease it up and everything. All right, we're gonna move on to putting the wheel on. And for this, you're gonna take off the front axle. So this does require one of the Allen heads that is provided. So that is one awesome thing about this bike. It has really beefy through axles. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and take this grease, assembly grease. We're just gonna put a nice amount on here. All right, once you have it on there, you can just kind of rub it around. Put it all over that axle. And this is gonna keep this thing from rusting if we're to get you know, water or anything like that in there. Okay, for this, you're gonna locate the disc brake side. Make sure you pull out the, the little spacer that's in between your brake housing here. And you wanna make sure you don't get any grease in here. We're actually just gonna pull it out like this. Before the through axle, it says tighten or torque to nine to 13 Newton meters. So we're gonna go tighten that. wipe off the excess grease if you need to. Huh, doesn't sound like it's rubbing or anything. That's pretty good. So the next thing we're gonna do is install the provided pedals and they are labeled. So make sure you're putting the left on the left hand crank and the right on the right hand crank. I've heard people get, you know, two lefts or two rights. Uh, but just make sure that you put them on the right way. Uh, these are, these go on a specific way. That way when you're pedaling, you're not going to lose a pedal. You can even tell right with right. 
so we don't have the pedal seize up. You can also apply some of the grease to these threads. Take the glove, rub that in just a little bit. There we go. And you can take the provided spanner wrench here and tighten these down. So we're not gonna tighten these down too much. I do plan on changing these out for a pair of polymer ones that also have these uh, little screws. So that is one cool thing about this bike. It does come with some decent pedals. These are alloy pedals right out of the box. So can't really complain there. You can do the same thing for the other side and get that other pedal on. All right, so the bike is pretty much completely assembled and I'm, I'm stoked to see if the gears actually work on this thing. So. One thing I am disappointed about though, the rear tire did come deflated and I just tried to put some air in it and it seems like the press the valve is a little messed up. So I don't know, I'm gonna have to look into that a little bit further, but for now we're gonna go through and check out the gears right now and see if they actually function the way they're supposed to. So this Dior drivetrain seems really solid. Seems to shift pretty quickly. Dang, all the way down. And this does allow you to shift multiple gears at once. Listen to that hum. I think it sounds pretty good, I don't know about you. All right, these nice Tektro brakes, and it does have the four piston brakes up front, the two piston in the back which is pretty good. A lot of people give the Tektro kind of a bad rep, but I don't think they're gonna be that bad. Let's get this thing out of the bike stand. We're gonna get it on the ground. We're gonna adjust the controls to where we need to in our seated position. We're gonna adjust the seat post and tighten that down, as well as set the sag for our rear shock, as well as the front forks. So if you've never done this before, please stay tuned for this part. It is critical to make sure that your bike is riding at its peak performance. So I messed with the Presto valve a little bit and I think I got it to work now. So it is holding air. We're using a floor pump that actually has a gauge and we're gonna get it to where it needs to be. I'm probably gonna put about 35 PSI on this tire. Cap back on it. We're gonna check the front PSI as well. Get it to where it needs to be. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is set your sag for your fork and your rear shock here. And what you're gonna to need to do is measure using a ruler or something that has millimeters on it. So I know this fork, since this is a medium frame, we got the 27 and a half inch wheels. This fork is actually set up for 150 mils of travel. So yep, yeah, right there would be 150, just about you know a centimeter below the top of the stanchion here. So what we're gonna look for is, I'm gonna try to set this up for about 25% sag, and that's with me sitting on it. So after doing the math, setting the sag to about 25% lands me around 37 and a half millimeters up the stanchion here. So you can make little reference things using a piece of cardboard too. You know, and I just realized this bike didn't even come with an O-ring to a, to set your sag. That's kind of crazy. There is an O-ring back here, you can see. And this one actually does have reference points for the sag. So we have 20, 30, and 40%, and it has little increments in between there. That's cool for the RockShox shock on the back here. But the fork, you're going to have to get creative. So what I'm going to do is actually grab a zip tie and use it as kind of like the same way you would an O-ring. All right, so grab a fancy zip tie here, place it on the stanchion, just tighten it down. I'm gonna clip off the end here, cause we'll probably just leave it on. All right, 
And as long as it's able to move freely, that's all you're looking for. This is where the shock pump actually comes in handy. We're gonna go ahead and take off the cap. It's gonna be on the left-hand side of the fork. Make sure you don't lose the cap. Okay, this is where you actually have to have a shock pump. And this is just a Fox uh, racing shock pump. But what you're gonna have to do is thread it on to this, onto the valve over here. Make sure you don't get it cross-threaded because that would just, that would suck to ruin your brand new fork. What you wanna do is lean up against the wall or something and actually see how much this sags. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm kinda of leaned over cause you wanna be in like your natural riding position. If you have gear, you wanna throw that on as well. I'm not gonna set it up that way right now, uh, but you're gonna to wanna to reach down. And without moving too much, you don't want to compress that fork anymore. You're going to try to get off the bike nice and slow after you push down the zip tie or your O-ring. So let's measure this and what we're looking for with 150 mils of travel is I was looking for about 37 millimeters. And that's actually just about right. That is sitting right at about 35, 37. So out of the box, this actually came set up for me. I weigh around 185 pounds, I'm 5'9", so it's not too bad. If you did need to add air or take out air, there's a couple things you wanna keep in mind. Anytime you take this off, you're gonna lose about five PSI. And whatever that equates to as far as your sag, could be different depending on whatever shock you're talking about. So we're gonna thread this cap back on. Okay, we're gonna look at the lockout here. So it doesn't have complete lockout, but it does pretty much stiffen up that fork to where it's not even working. So all the way open. Press is pretty good. And there is various settings for this. So all the way open and then all the way closed. So I'm gonna leave it all the way open. All right, setting the sag on the rear shock. Hopefully this one's set up good too, but we're also gonna lean up against something and grab the brakes here. Okay, you could cycle through the suspension a little bit, get it going just a little bit and then kind of settle in to your position. Okay, and then you're just gonna reach down, slide that O-ring, or if you have a zip tie, up against that shock tube, up against the housing itself, and then you're just gonna get off as naturally as you can. Okay, so we have well over 40% sag right here. That is not what we're looking for. I'm actually looking for about 25 here in the rear. Um, so what we're gonna have to do is actually add air to this. If it's too much sag, you just add air to it. If it's not enough sag, you're gonna take air out. So for this one, you're gonna find the, the little fill up port right here, the little valve. Make sure you don't lose that either. Thread this on nice and easy. So we're gonna put about, I don't know, 175 PSI on this. We're gonna see where we're at. And you can leave this hooked up. You don't have to actually take it off every time. All right, I'm looking down. I can actually see kind of where the tube is in relation to the percentages here. 
get off nice and easy again. All right, so we got up to 40%. We still have way too much sag. So we're gonna add probably another 50 PSI to this shock tube. And this does say 325 max PSI. And we're only sitting at about 250 right now. Okay. I'm gonna leave that right there. We're gonna get on the bike again. Okay, I'm gonna cycle that rear shock. Try to reach down nice and easy. Pull that O-ring up. All right, so we're sitting at, just right at 25%. So that's, a, that's exactly where I wanted this thing. So we're not gonna go any further with it uh, before I do some test rides with this. So we'll take it out and do some test rides. We'll also go ahead and set the rebound, uh, but that's something you kind of have to do when you're out on the trail itself. Uh, so check out my videos on how to set rebound. Uh, we'll go ahead and publish some of those videos as well. All right, guys, thanks for checking out this build video of the Polygon Siskiyou T7. And if you're looking at this bike for purchasing, this is a pretty good entry-level trail bike. And it has good geometry to it for going down trails. You can see the head angle is pretty slack compared to a lot of bikes you get at this price range. It comes with a pretty nice fork. And if you get the 27 and a half inch wheel size, you get 150 mils of travel in the front versus 140 if you go with the 29er version. And this is a medium frame. And just after sitting on it, this thing fits me to a T. We're gonna be going out and doing some test rides. So definitely check out some of my other videos when I actually upload those as well. But guys, hopefully this gave you a little bit of information on how to build this thing. And like I said, I'm gonna be posting a video on all the specs and things like that that correlate to this bike. So guys, hope you liked this video. If you did, hit that subscribe button, stick around, we'd love to have you. Also hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. All right guys, thanks for checking it out.